see the blue lights, you see the beanie. I think some of you might already know what's going on. It's another Tony Rice solo time for the mandolin. You probably just want to hear the solo that we're going to learn today. So just, just, just roll it. As we always do, let's dive right in. So starting off like any Tony solo, we have a pickup measure. So let's take a look at that. So this pickup measure happens on beat two. So if we're counting this one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, that one is right where the chords for the solo start to happen. Now this is again, a classic Tony hammer on from an F to a G. We are in the key of G here from an F to a G which is just a flat seven to a one. And this happens with the downstroke. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So again, keep your hand moving through this to kind of help you keep track. We're using down up picking. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. This is gonna help you keep on track with what's going on. So the next part that happens, we're thinking key of G playing a C sharp and a B flat in there and sliding that to a B. So all of this is kind of bluesy category. You think of Bill Monroe. He does this stuff all the time. Make sure we keep after those pull-offs, hammer-ons, and slides. These are very important to Tony's style, so let's try to emulate it as much as possible. So that first measure, the next note after that three, because that three is held to all the way to beat one of measure one, we have on the and of one, a C sharp, which happens to be an upstroke and then a pull off. So it's an upstroke pull off. We don't do another downstroke there. So one, two, three, four, one. Just playing the pickup measure to measure one. One, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. All right, so just be mindful of the pull off and the slide from B flat to B, which happens quite often. So keep that in the bank. So this next part is really tricky, especially up to speed uh, because of this fifth that we have. So I'll play it really slowly for you. So what's happening is a pull off with your index finger. So it's a downstroke. And I like to use my ring finger for the next part, which is not normally what I do here. But for this part, ring finger, because we have a fifth that's gonna happen. Uh, so that means we're gonna bring our middle finger up to hit that fifth, which is gonna be that fifth fret on the G string. So it looks something like this really slow. And then we do have to reach back on the third fret with our index finger back here. So it's gonna be a little bit of a reach but once you get the hang of it, it won't be a problem. So what you might notice is that I'm sliding with this middle finger, hitting two notes uh, on the third fret of the D string, which is an F, and then I'm switching fingers between my middle finger to my ring finger here. So slowly it looks like this. just so you get an idea of what's happening here. And the reason I switch fingers is so that I can hit this slide that's coming up at the start of measure three with my pinky. So again, So be mindful, there are pull-offs at the end of measures three going into four. When the song gets really fast, sometimes you can pick these because it's sometimes easier than hitting pull-offs. It de just depends what you hit more cleanly. So just make sure on measure four you get your picking right. It's gonna be down stroke, down, up, up, down. We're not gonna play that last upstroke because it's a slide from two to four. So again, Thank you. 
And then what this leads us to is what Tony does so well is to the next chord, to the five chord. And what he does here is he slides into a, a D double stop. This is a typical double stop that happens in the mandolin world. Um, you might have heard it before. Uh, if you haven't, familiarize yourself with it because it is important. Because it moves us to other shapes, double stop shapes as well. And here, what Tony does is takes the D shape and then moves it down to a C double stop. So this is something that you can do over five chords with any double stop, is you take uh, the double stop chord that you're on, so let's say we're on D, and you could take any D double stop, so let's take this double stop right here, uh, A string, ninth fret, E string, fifth fret. You can move it down two frets, which will give us a C double stop, and it'll sound great over any five chord, or if you have a dominant chord, it'll make it sound really bluesy and fun, so... So what we're doing on measure four to five is that we're sliding in from the second fret of the D string to the fourth fret. So this is just really tricky. We're just sliding in. So we just have a lot of upstroke type of picking here. I'm just going to play it slow a couple of times for you, just so you can get the hang of it. One more time. From the end of measure four to five, this is what we're doing. Up, down, up, 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 down, slide, up. So at the very end of measure five, from beats three to four, uh, it's a downstroke. And we're sliding on that upstroke without hitting another downstroke afterwards, and then another upstroke. Then measure six, we have a very typical bluesy lick. Notice that we are playing out of the key of G here over that five chord. This is something that you can do on a five chord to kind of start resolving it back to back to one or back to G here. So slowly measure six and seven and the start of eight sound like this. One, two, three, four, one. Measure eight is really cool because we can do somewhat of a bend on a mandolin, which is something we don't do often. So if we just take a look at it, it's actually a really simple measure. Uh, the bend just makes it look weird. So this is what it sounds like. You don't want to bend your string out of tune, but you can give it a nice little tug. And so to pick this, it's down, down, up, down, up, and then hold it. And we're holding this all the way to the next measure to the second beat. So timing wise, it's going to sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Nine and ten are pretty self-explanatory. They sound like this. One. So we're out of this kind of G shape right here here. And then for measures 11 and 12, we have this. So a little tricky, but basically, again, we're playing out of this shape that we played out of earlier. But at the very end of this, we're actually resolving to that five chord. So let's take a look at measures nine all the way to 12. I'll play it really slowly just so you can see my fingers. One, two, three, four, one. And then 
oh boy, do we have a fun lit coming up in measure 13 to the end. Uh, this doesn't lay out really well on the mandolin, but it is really addicting to play once you do get it. So I'll just play it slowly for you just so you can hear it. So this whole lick is going to eventually end on a C chord, which is when another instrument takes over the solo break. But to get there, we have a lot of fourths, we have some fifths, uh, they're just really tricky to play. So let's take this slowly. So this is the first measure. So measure 14 is when it gets really tricky. We're doing a pull-off with our ring finger to our middle finger. And then another slide down with our pinky from the 11th fret to the 10th fret on the A string. So... And on the record, Tony doesn't slide from this A flat to this G, or this 11th fret to this 10th fret. I think it works better on the mandolin, uh, and it just makes the phrasing, once it gets faster, a little bit easier on us. For the rest of this phrase, after I slide down with the pinky, I'm hitting ring finger, middle finger, index finger on the 8, 5, and 3rd fret. So, all together that measure looks like this. Slower. So, measure 13 and 14 together sound like this. And now, probably the hardest part. Um, sorry ahead of time, but there's no good way to play this. Uh, so what I'm doing is pinky on the 8th fret of the A string and then index finger for the 3rd fret. That index is going to be hitting that 5th. We're going to have to go up to a G on the downstroke. So there's no better way to do that. And then pinky comes back to hit that 8th fret on the A string. And then pinky is actually going to go up for a fifth, which is so incredibly awkward for mandolin. Uh, and then that pinky is actually going to pull off as well. There's just no... There's just no way around this. I'm sorry, but it's going to really help your pinky strength. So... One thing you can do is cheat the second and beat, which is going to be this F, you can make that just a little bit shorter of a note value uh, to make sure your pinky gets up here to hit this pull off right here. Oh man, that is just difficult. So slowly, watch the cutoff note there. It allows me time to shift my pinky so that it's in a better position to kind of pull off, because pulling off from this to this is very hard, so being able to shift that pinky into a, a much better position is always more advantageous. So, slowly, it's like this. And then pinky slides B flat to B, middle finger for that G, and then open D. And that weird little off you're hearing is just first fret to an open D and that's happening on an upstroke which might feel weird at first but I think you'll get the hang of it so that measure what is that 13 14 15 16 sounds like this and just be mindful of the pick direction that's the important part here So measure 13 through 16 all together looks a little bit like this. One, two, three, four. And if we take a look at breaking this down and seeing what's happening, uh, to me, we're hitting 
an A, which is the fifth of D. We're hitting an F, which is kind of a bluesy part of D. Coming back up for the D up here. Hitting a C, B, A, A flat, G, F, D, and then C. And this is leading us back eventually to G. So all of this is basically can be seen as, you know, you can play this over a D7. All of this is just basically kind of like bluesy repertoire for the key of D, or D7, if you will. So for example, you can play these notes uh, in any pattern you want and kind of get a bluesy sound. So I'll just go ahead. This is a D chord, D7. Imagine this behind me. So I'm gonna take these notes, the root, the flat three, the four, the sharp four, the five, the six, and the seven. And you can make your own phrasings over this, like this. You don't have to play this lick note for note, but you can get an idea of what notes he's using over the chord to kind of solo like him. So if you want to get good at improvising, Take these ideas, maybe take the note selection and not necessarily the exact order of notes, and try to make your own phrases up. All right, so measure 15. This is just something Tony likes to use a lot. Um, this is just something that Tony likes to use a lot. We're using an F. So we're over a G chord in measure 15. We're playing an F, which is a flat seven. We're playing a C, which is a four. Then we're playing root flat seven, C to B to G to D. So a lot of these are chord tones, um, except the F flat seven is not in the key of G major, but it is a kind of a bluesy note. So this is why he's playing that in there. It's just a cool tonyism. Even if you analyze the notes like, oh, he's using these notes here. Uh, this selection of notes, I feel like is just something that Tony liked to play often. And you can use this selection if you wanted to. Feel free just to take that, but that is just a difficult lick to play on the mandolin. How Mountain Girls Can Love. What a great solo off of a great record by Tony Rice. If you want the sheet music, or if you want backing tracks, or different camera angles of my hands and the instrument, you can visit my Patreon. Uh, there you can find all of this. And actually, I just like making the sheet music free for you guys because y'all are awesome. Again, I want to thank you for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please, please, please do. It helps so, so much and it's free. The next solo we're going to take a look at, which will be part four of the series, will be Nine Pound Hammer off of the album Manzanita. All right, everyone, work on that ending lick and I will see you later.